In the unregulated and often opaque art world, auction prices are the only publicly shared numbers that indicate an artwork's market value. So what happens when Ai Weiwei installs 100 million porcelain sunflower seeds for an exhibition at Tate's Turbine Hall? Hundreds of people beavering away to make these little sculptures. Here's one ton that sold at Sotheby's in 2012. A jar of 1,000 sold in 2011. Here are 83 possibly fake listings on eBay right now. This one's for 25 seeds, probably enough to fill this 500-plus-year-old teacup, which Leo Ichian bought for $36 million at Sotheby's. Somebody's been looking in that market for 25 years. They're ready to move like that. The same collector broke records by winning Modigliani's new couché. At $152 million. Sold here. And paying for it with the Xamax. This is Sin Lee, deputy chairman of Christie's Asia, brokering a sale. Today in China, there's a young collectors. Most of them are Western educated. There is a demand for Western art from all over the world. Numbers command headlines. And there are people who are interested in the art market who actually aren't interested in art. Wait a second. Hang on. How do we get here? Fine art auctions were once a place for dealers to buy cheaply so they could resell the customers at a markup. Anymore. Now, they're one of art's most anticipated events of the season. You know, 30 years ago, didn't matter so much. Giving us the rare opportunity to see what world-class art actually costs. I think the great thing about auctions is they are so democratic. It's confusing. It's still an insider's world. The more information you have, the more help you need to filter through all of it. A number of different characteristics are taken into account to generate an artwork's auction reserve and estimate. Take this Basquiat, for instance. It's from 1982, widely considered his best year, painted during an inspired trip to Modena, Italy. His work is almost impossible to come by, the scale and of this quality. It's one of his largest canvases at 16 feet wide, nearly 8 feet tall, and it hasn't been on the market since 2004. I think that Basquiat is one of the great painters of this time. The work shows one of the painter's characteristic alter egos on an explosive backdrop. The most important quality is whether it's groundbreaking in a new idea or method. This was the star lot of last week's evening sale at Christie's. When you're buying, your heart rate goes up to about 150. It's dynamic, it's exciting, it's interesting. It's 10, 11, 15, 62, 7. Four and a half, five, five and a half, six. And then you realize two minutes later, it's over. Two people got incredibly excited and the desire got above any rational. The high bidder at an auction has paid more money for a work than anyone else in the world thinks it's worth at that point in time. It set a record for the artist, selling for $51 million, 57.3 million with the buyer's premium. $51 million. On the other hand, no one ever wants to talk about lots that don't sell. All the indices are wrong because they don't have the zero value. So if you have an index about, say, Andy Warhol prices, and you have the one Warhol that didn't sell, then who cares about the index? I love it. I think it's great, because it's it's all wrong. They're not shares of stock. People are coming from a financial world with absolutely no knowledge of the art market. A consigner's fear of a no-sale can inspire the auction house or a third party to guarantee a certain price. Guarantees bring better works of art to auction. You're in essence getting an insurance policy, and you're giving away some of your upside. And in this way, art functions as an explicit financial tool. Art was not made to be an investment. Investors follow trends, not emotions. I visit enormous amount of collections, and it's shocking that so many have the same artists, and you see them over and over and over again, and you're like, like, really? The publicity generated by high auction prices may have an homogenizing effect on collecting trends. At 100 But those prices only give us one angle with which to measure an artist's market. The Basquiat probably won't go to auction again for 100 years. The Modigliani, maybe never. Weiwei's 100 million seeds, fake or real, will still be on eBay.